Our next speaker is Robert, and he will talk about how using the raft consensus algorithm helped him a lot. Um, Robert, you have the floor. Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Um, um, well, at the start, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Robert Wojciechowski. I work for Scalable, which is uh, making a distributed storage system. And uh, I am wondering how many of you are system administrators here. Uh, yeah, I, I can see a lot of you are. So probably uh, you face uh, an issue of having uh, lots of, uh, maybe not lots of, but a couple of servers with, uh, with a lot of free space on them. And you were wondering what to do with that space. So uh, I started thinking about this uh, situation at once. And uh, I thought that I could build my own, um, own distributed storage uh, cluster. Because uh, why not? I have a lot of free space. I could make some good use of it. And I could also have a cluster which would be as pre compatible. Uh, that would give me some um, additional uh, freedom of usage. Uh, so my goals were to build a cluster which would be, first of all, free for me. And I would not have to spend lots of time on maintaining this. Uh, I asked you how many of you are system administrators, and I'm not. Uh, and for me, uh, ease of use is, uh, is one of the most important goals because I really wanted to, uh, you know, to just set up the configuration and to be able to store my data there. And one of the requirements was uh, to be fault tolerant. I, I used to store my backups on, on those servers, and I really wanted them to be distributed uh, on my behalf, and they would be replicated. So my data should be saved there. After looking some, uh, at some possible solutions, there were a couple of them. But I got inter interested in Scalable SX, uh, distributed storage, uh, which is a GPL licensed uh, solution for, for the people like me. Uh, it is meant to be easy, easy to use. And it, is also, it also supports uh, S3 compatibility with Libra S3 layer. And uh, this solution uh, seemed to me very, very nice because uh, I, I, was, uh, I was reading a little bit about it. And it turned out that this, this supports a couple of uh, nice features like uh, block level deduplication, which would be, uh, well, it, it will. I was thinking that it would be easy uh, for uh, would be nice for me to to have this deduplication because I store lots of data which can uh, usually be deduplicated so why should I spend a lot of time on, on sending data which is already there uh, besides the duplication it is of course uh, scalable which means that uh, you can easily add or remove nodes to the cluster uh, uh, on your demand and you you don't have to de uh, disable it, turn it off, or, or anything else. It just works uh, as it is. And also, it is a multi-platform solution, which uh, you can easily install on any Unix-based systems. Um, it works for Linux as BSD. So, well, I had the, I had the scalability, but there was something I, I would really appreciate. Uh, it was... Uh, Fault tolerance. Uh, the software already supported data, uh, data replication and uh, distribution of the blocks. Uh, so they are equally distributed between nodes of the cluster. And already software supported administrator tools uh, from the CLI interface, which uh, allowed me to disable node which I would know that they are failed. Uh, this, uh, this, routing, uh, this routing needs to be done by an admin, which is uh, called a set faulty um, function. And it enables you to, to inform the cluster that some of the data may not be available. So when you have enough replicas of your, of your blocks, and you know that one of the nodes or more of them are dead, basically, because some power outage or, or something, you can uh, inform the, the alive nodes that the, the data should not be sent to them and, ret and retrieved from those nodes. 
Okay, but as I said, there was uh, there was missing uh, missing feature of automatic failover. Uh, the cluster was uh, able to deal with uh, with failed nodes only when I told it, told it told him to do it. so. So I started thinking what what could be done to improve this uh, this software and to to make. Uh, to make it uh, aware of um, of automatic failover. So, what was needed for me was uh, the ability for the cluster members, the nodes, to detect uh, the situation of failure. In order to detect the situation of failure, I needed some leader node which would uh, perform the operations I previously had to uh, do from the CLI uh, interface as an admin. Uh, the leader node should uh, do this task on my behalf. Uh, also, the, the leader node should, uh, should be um, the one which would uh, be, uh, which would be um, respected as making a decision. And also, all the, all the uh, live nodes, all the rest of the nodes should follow this decision made by, by this leader node. So the uh, Conclusion was that I definitely needed a mm, consensus algorithm. Uh, the software uh, was at the state that it does not support, did not support that. And uh, well, the consensus algorithm is basically designed to handle this, the exact situation I had. Uh, when you have a failure condition, uh, when you need some uh, internal decision to be made uh, automatically, uh, you definitely need a consensus algorithm. So I started looking at what are the possibilities, and basically I, uh, I started looking at two of them which were the most commonly um, returned from possible uh, algorithms. Uh, the first was Paxos, which is probably the, one of the most known algorithms. Uh, it is a proven to work, uh, let's say, very complicated algorithm to implement. Uh, there are many of implementations of it, uh, but uh, it turns out that uh, many of them also has to be somehow um, adjusted to the working environment. So, well, there was existing some, some software that uh, I could probably use, uh, but also I didn't want to include too much to the software existing. But I started also looking at the Raft algorithm, and the Raft algorithm was uh, basically designed to be easier version of Paxos, easier to implement. And so, uh, well, why not taking a look at, at the specifications when, when it is told that it is easy? And it turned out that, uh, yeah, I should be able to do it. Uh, why, why not? Uh, why not to try? So, I started uh, reading and now I'm gonna tell you a little uh, basics on how does it work uh, and what uh, stuff I needed from it to do my job. So first uh, thing I, uh, I needed uh, was the leader election. As I said in the beginning, uh, the, uh, the software itself did not have a concept of master and slave nodes or leader and follower as you call them. And so this is the first situation I had to face. Basically, every node, each node, is equal to each other. They have a follower role, which means that all, all they should obey the, the leader node um, commands, but there is no leader. So, at least one of them will at some point just time out. The timeout, which is uh, called uh, election timeout, is a time uh, after which some nodes should uh, start thinking that something is wrong. There is, no, there is no command from the leader. So, well, when the node times out, it starts a, a routine called uh, election, basically. When the election starts, the node which timed out changes its role as a candidate. When a node is a candidate, it starts sending request vote queries. Request vote queries are just uh, simple, uh, simple uh, uh, queries that contains the ID of the sender, which, which can be saved on the follower nodes. Which means that when a follower node receives a re request vote query, 
it saves the, uh, the number or ID of the node which sends the request vote query. Uh, so that is pretty simple and uh, the, that uh, mark is needed for the nodes to avoid uh, voting for other nodes. So when there are a couple of uh, voting nodes in the cluster, uh, follower nodes can only vote for one at a time. And it is also uh, a part of the algorithm that candidate node votes for itself. So in one election, uh, a candidate node receives at least one vote. And the final state of this voting is that candidate received three votes. Three votes are more than half of the nodes in the cluster. In this, in this simple case, uh, there are three clusters, so it had to uh, get two votes out of three. Uh, so the situation is simple. Uh, node number two becomes a viable leader now. When it becomes a leader, it has to immediately send hybrid queries. Hybrid queries are uh, just the simple ping-like queries, which are meant to uh, reset timeouts on the follower nodes. Uh, effectively uh, stopping them of, uh, of being timed out. Then, while the node is sending heartbeat queries to all the nodes, it should, uh, it should just still become the uh, state to be this leader and all the nodes should follow its commands. Okay, so that's the first thing I needed from the, from the cluster to elect some node which would be uh, which would uh, behave as an administrator, basically. What happens when uh, a node fails? When a node fails, uh, the leader node should somehow detect this situation. And that's how this will work in ASAC storage. Let's suppose that node number three is dead. In this situation, uh, it's crossed out. So it, it should get the heartbeat query, but it's not responding for it. It's not responding properly. So the node number two and node number one are basically connected to each other, but node number three, it's not rather working. So what happens in this situation is that node number two will uh, reach the timeout. Uh, it's called a heartbeat timeout. It's, uh, it's a different timeout than election timeout. It's the, it's the thing that, will, uh, that can be configured by the cluster administrator. And after that time, I want my leader node to send the query of exclusion of the node number three. And what happens next is that, is that node number three is excluded. How is it excluded? It is, it is uh, performed uh, in the same way as I would, uh, I would do from the command line. Only the alive nodes are communicated with this exclusion command. And the node number three is not, uh, is not no longer uh, considered as a part of the member. This means for the clients that uh, when they connect to all the nodes of the cluster, um, they won't get any errors on, at the condition time. And when the node uh, three, which was marked as faulty, um, gets, uh, gets excluded from the cluster, it can be later uh, exchanged by the new node. So the cluster administrator can reveal the lacking uh, data replicas. <coughs> now let's, let's say a little bit how, how was it implemented in SX. I basically used the existing internal API. I, I, my goal was not to overcomplicate things. So I, I started thinking if I couldn't reuse existing API and it, it was fairly easy. It was just adding two types of queries and the node exclusion uh, command was already existing. Uh, it was available from the cluster admin, and now it just became uh, being sent internally, which uh, also give me, gave me the uh, effective uh, failure detection on the cluster. Also, what, what is, uh, what is uh, important is that cluster administrator still have a control over how is it, this exclusion working. <coughs> By default, the heartbeat timeout is disabled, which means that if you are an administrator and you don't really want those nodes to be excluded automatically, just in case, 
you have it disabled. But you can simply enable it by a single command, which is setting the uh, which is setting uh, one value in the cluster. Let me just finish. And when you uh, kick out uh, the 120 is uh, is a timeout in seconds. It, it is just for testing purposes. So it uh, it is meant to be to give you quickly quick overview how does it work. So when you kill one of the nodes, um, you will see that administrator information tool uh, won't be able to communicate with it. But after some time, the node will be marked as faulty. When the node is marked as faulty, it is no longer considered as a part of the cluster. But you can still uh, reveal the data from the other nodes to, uh, to exchange this uh, faulty node. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope that it was not too complicated. And uh, well, please follow uh, Scalable if you are interested. And I'm giving a next next presentation right after that, which is about a client for the storage. It's called SXFS. It is a client-side encryption uh, featured uh, client tool for this for this cloud, basically. Thank you very much, and I don't know if you have time. Yes, yes thanks, Peter. <laughs> okay, there is time for a couple of questions. So, uh, you mentioned about kicking the client nodes, but what happens is your lead node dies. I didn't uh, see sorry? this uh, uh, because that's why by your presentation I didn't see was the failover. If your lead node dies, yeah. can client take over or no? Uh, let let me check. There is a situation uh, where the leader node dies. Uh, as you can see, it's marked as a leader. The situation is pretty easy. Can you use this one now that takes so much noise? Oh. Can you hear me now? Oh, better. Uh, the situation is pretty easy now. Uh, the leader node dies, which means that effectively uh, some of follower nodes will reach the election timeout. As I said uh, before, uh, followers uh, are waiting for heartbeat queries. So when a leader node dies, a uh, heartbeat query is no longer going to the follower nodes, which means that it will win the election. Of course, uh, it still has to follow the convention of majority of votes. Are there any other questions? OK, just a second. Hi, uh, I'm wondering what about network split in a situation when we have larger cluster than uh, three nodes, let's say seven nodes, and you have like three and four uh, splitted clusters. Uh, I, I'm not sure what you mean by split clusters. Uh, there is network split and uh, there are connection only between uh, three uh, nodes and uh, other splitted four nodes. Yeah, in this, in this, let's say, particular situation of seven nodes, uh, you still have four nodes uh, which can communicate with each other, and they are in the majority. So, uh, what happens is that uh, the majority of vote uh, of nodes will uh, elect a leader during, uh, in this uh, in this four uh, nodes uh, part of this cluster, and the three of them won't elect them as themselves. Uh, so, uh, what happens that is that the leader is in the majority still, and it can. Uh, uh, work uh, normally. I, I don't know if it. I, if I, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess it's best to start with the next talk. And if there is time left in the end, then we can still ask questions about this uh, talk as well. So, Robert.